joining me in the studio, former Conservative advisor Alex Crowley is with us. I'll tell you what, Alex, um, I've got anxiety now after watching that Rishi Sunak speech. I mean, there was not really a lot of... We've sort of got used to it. I mean, we know that public speaking, he's very fluent, he's very intelligent, nobody doubts that, but he doesn't give it that zam factor. There's no sense of, wow, this guy's good. No, and as ever with uh, Sunak, he is extremely well-meaning, uh, but the, the topics that he chooses are perhaps not absolute number one on people's list of priorities. Mm. But that's fine. That, that's going to be an issue for the voters to judge in, 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 in a few months' time, possibly. Um, there's a bigger issue here. Well, first of all, the government's run out of money, so things like the welfare bill are suddenly looking very, very precarious. Yep. So that's, that's, what's, that's partly what's driving this. But there's a bigger societal change that... Any politician wanting to run for office is going to have to get their head around, which is because we have essentially become, over the last, let's say, 10, 20, 30 years, an ever-increasing nanny state, there has been a steady erosion of responsibility on the part of, of, of people and mm. individuals. When you get to a point, and the pandemic exacerbated this, obviously, because that was like peak nanny state, right? We were being paid to stay at home. Uh, beyond the wildest dreams of any kind of leftist uh, economist. Sure. Uh, for, for necessary reasons, I'm not attacking that. But we've got to a point now where it's, there is an unfortunate trend of it's somebody else's fault. It's somebody else's fault that I can't do this. Uh, and we see our politics infected with it as well. If you live in Scotland, uh, it, it's not the SNP government's fault. No, 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 it's Westminster, yes. even though all the deep devolutions happened, right? If you live in Wales, it's not the Welsh government's fault. If you live in London, it's not the mayor of London's fault. No, no, it's the government's fault. But the governments are not immune to this either. Uh, they will then say it's somebody else's fault, and yep. so on and so on and so on. And so on it goes. Is it any wonder that people, society in general, is kind of not bothering with the responsibility thing anymore? Yeah. And, and look, Sunak was right there. He, he's right not to downplay the, the impact of mental health. But when you have a scenario where our economy has been flatlining for how long now? Over I mean, a decade. Arguably right? since 2008. Since the crash. Yeah. Right, since the great financial yeah. crisis. When are we going to start growing? Yeah. And, and we, growth is, it, it's not numbers on a spreadsheet. Growth is the fulfilment of a better paying job, security, being able to move up in life. That's what growth really means. Yeah. And that's what we're not talking about. And just a final point on this, Alex. Um, 2.8 million people are inactive owing to long-term sickness. That is up from 2.1 million, so 700,000 yeah. increase. Of those, 53% apparently have anxiety. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it makes you unkind or over-cynical to say, but really, all of those people? Is Rishi Sunak right when he says we are over-medicalising basic hassles and jip of life? Well, this is it. I think there is a very clear distinction to be drawn that we've perhaps, we've perhaps lost sight of this over the last few years. Between, you can be anxious about something. It, it can make you genuinely worried, but that doesn't mean that you're incapable of doing it. We've, got, we've lost this idea that difficult things are good for you. right? If you, if you take on a difficult challenge, something that you previously thought you couldn't do, and if you do it, and, and even better if you succeed in it, how much more fulfilling is that mm. than saying... I'm really worried about that thing, so I'm not even going to try. And that, I know that's a broader philosophical point, but we, we've got to change that mindset. I'm at, I, I was anxious coming on television today, yeah. but I still came. Now, people will judge... Are you going to take a week off? People will judge whether it was a good idea or not. <laughs> um, but, you know... Uh, some have already judged, Alex. Some of them, and rightly so. Um, uh, get, we, we have to find a way, as, as a conversational amongst us all... Yep. Get over the difficult things because you will feel better for it. Good point. Uh, let's move on then. After former SNP Chief Executive Peter Murrell was charged in connection with the embezzlement of party funds yesterday, his wife, the former First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, has now broken her silence. Take a look. Incredibly difficult, but, you know, that's not the main issue here. So um, I can't say any more. I'm not going to say any more. That's it. That's really all she had to say. Just give us the wider story here. Remind us, Alex, of what this is all about. Well, the, 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 the wider issue here was that there, there had been accusations that uh, Nicola Sturgeon's uh, husband and partner, who ran the Scottish National Party, there were issues to do with whether the finances of that party were properly controlled or not. There was money raised for one purpose, and, it, and the accusation is that that money was then spent on a different purpose. 
Uh, the police are investigating, so we're going to that will come out in the wash eventually. Mm. Um, but again, the, uh, what's the broader issue going on here? I actually think the broader issue here, again, it kind of comes back to this theme of people just kind of washing their hands of responsibility. Um, it's very, very interesting that because, because normal politics, as we used to know it, i.e. the free and open debate, the issues being settled at elections, contests being played out, we've moved away from that to politics being fought in the courts mm -hmm. and, 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 and involving the police. And we see this in America, of course, all the time. And that's a very troubling shift, I think, because, because air, whole areas of policy debate have been shut down. There are certain things that you can't talk about anymore or that people can't engage over. It suddenly gets moved onto a whole different plane and suddenly our political differences yep. are being fought in the courts. And that is not a healthy position. To Indeed. Be. Um, whatever the outcome, of course, this is uh, just not good news for the SNP, who've taken a right old tumble um, in yeah. the last year. But let's, I mean, let's encompass... It won't be their fault, of course. It won't be It'll their be fault. It'll be somebody else. It'll be Westminster. Yes. Down there in Westminster causing exactly. trouble. Yeah. What, well, what about this, then? This is going on down there in Westminster, yeah. and it does involve a possible call for police inquiry. Labour have written to Lancashire Constabulary, calling for investigation into the suspended Tory MP Menzies for... Uh, Mark Menzies, of course, who was um, uh, sadly trapped in a room and only 5,000 quid would get him out. Um, who knows what was going on in that room, but we can only speculate. But nonetheless, the accusation is that he uh, is responsible for encouraging others to use party funds uh, to pay his either medical expenses or... We, we don't even know. Was this a ransom he was being asked to pay? He owed some money. He said it was to clear up after he'd been sick. Five thousand quid. You can clean a. You could clean Buckingham Palace for five grand. Good lord. Regardless of what it is, I mean, is this a reasonable example where the police should investigate? Well, I mean, uh, obviously, we don't really know what happened, and again, that will that will all come out in 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 the wash. We hope. Um, I think what people want from their police, which I think is right, is that where politicians have potentially fallen foul of the law, whichever party they come from, uh, whichever views they hold. Uh, whichever position they hold, that the police will investigate all of it uh, without fear or favour. Mm. That is the oath that they take. Um, and, and I think that the minimum that voters expect is that they treat everyone equally. And if there is something to investigate, then it should be investigated. Uh, and if there's not, then it shouldn't be. And if an investigation is undertaken, it should be undertaken properly, as we perhaps saw with Angela Rayner, which is why yeah. it had to be reopened. So we, we don't know what happened in either case. That's for a whole other process to decide. But I think we want to see consistency across the board. Yeah, and, and this, look, you know, what we're supposed to say, apparently, uh, at times like this, is, look, it doesn't matter what he did in his private... You know, forget the money side for, for one moment. It doesn't matter what he does in his private life, consenting adults, people can do whatever they like. But we can have a... I mean, I think this is a fairly mucky old character who can't keep his trousers on, frankly. I mean, he's got form. We know what happened in 2014. He lost a position as an aide back then. Apparently got his next-door neighbour's dog drunk on one occasion. Well, what the heck's that all about? I don't even dive into that one too much. And now, you know, here he was... Well, we don't know what he was doing in a room and then another room and why he needed 5,000 quid. But um, will he be one of those that steps down at the next election? Because mm. 100 MPs will be stepping down... We keep hearing this headline. It's not actually a record amount, though, because this does happen come elections, particularly when they've done their full term. Exactly. And one of the big clues that you know that there's about to be a big change in Parliament is that when you see lots of MPs from both sides, although in this case mostly the yeah. governing party's side... Running for the hills. ...decide, you know what, <laughs> I, I don't fancy this anymore. I've um, had enough, Governor. Uh, exactly. And, you know, and, and it does... You do get, you do get them in waves. And, in it, and if a parliament's been running for a long time, uh, 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 such as this period of government, then you're going to see that. Mm. I think everyone knows that it is very clearly a sign that, you know, the Conservative, a lot of the Conservative benches have just sort of lost the stomach for it. Yep. Uh, and you get this after a while. Although, actually, interestingly, there's quite a few MPs that, you know, were elected much more recently that are now deciding to step down. And that's perhaps a more broader comment on the state of our politics. Because yeah, yeah. usually if you've been in for 20 years, it's quite normal to retire. But that's if true. you've only been for five years, yeah. what's going on? It's probably because you think you're going to lose or it's probably because you think this isn't what I thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, I think there's a lot of MPs. I mean, we give MPs a, a really hard time. You know this as well as anybody else, Alex. You know, an MP that does their job properly is mm -hmm. worth their weight in gold. It's a, yeah. almost a thankless job. It's never-ending. It's non-stop. It's seven days a week. You're never... 
you're never off duty in no. many respects. Um, and then if you live outside of London, where your workplace is based, that's not your fault, that's where it's based. So most MPs have got to do a lot of travelling on yeah. top of that. I'm not shedding any tears for anybody here, but I'm talking about the good MPs, the yeah. rare good ones, it seems, these days. Um, but I think others might have taken it on and thought, this looks like a good job. And then when they did it, thought, oh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. This is, like, I'm, I'm replying to people who want, who want their drains unblocked. Best part of the week, and at the weekends, I'm planting trees at old folks' homes. Exactly. Public service is not glamorous, and nor should it be. It's a service. Sure. Hey, absolutely right. 1979, um, 85 MPs stood down. Yeah. That's when Thatcher came in, of yeah. course, um, after the Callaghan government couldn't make it there work. Yeah. Um, and then 1997, when Blair came in, um, that was 18 years of Tory government. Blair came in, 117 MPs stood down. And 2010, which was after 13 years mm -hmm. of uh, Labour rule, we had 149 MPs stand down yeah. after that. Yeah. So. I, 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 I think that trend shows you that there's a lot of MPs who are quite good at forecasting election results, aren't they? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> Particularly in 97, it seems. <laughs> uh, there it is. Alex, good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Alex Crowley with us here on Talk TV.